you no secret circuit. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Gloria printed in your bulletin. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and the A reading from the Hebrew scripture. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 29 by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees ripe. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace.
The epistle today is from Acts chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we had not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Greek of 
the New Testament. And it means manifestation or appearance. More specifically, an appearance or manifestation of God to us humans. But epiphany also means more. It also means a flash of inspiration. Like I'm sure many of us have heard someone say, oh, I had an epiphany, a totally new idea. Yes, it's the aha moment, a flash of insight, or seeing a new way of doing something. And there's been numerous ways God has manifested or appeared to us. And many of these are described in the Bible and also in the writings of many other religious traditions. And so I ask you, have you ever had an epiphany? How has God manifested in your life? One way that God has been described as an epiphany is God is light. And as we know, the holy many times is described as light, such as Christ is the light of the world, and God is light, and um, I'm sure we've all heard phrases like, have you seen the light? Thinking of the, that episode or that scene in the movie, The Blues Brothers. And many who've had a near-death experience describe that they're going through this long tunnel and at the end of the tunnel is this huge and intense and very bright light so bright brighter than anything we could possibly imagine here on earth but there's more they also describe the light emits like an, an, a love a feeling of love and intense calm and peace Now, we've all heard the New Testament stories that describe how the Magi were following the light of a star toward Bethlehem to give gifts to the new baby Jesus. And our scripture readings for today have a ton of references about God as light. Genesis talks, uh, says, as God is creating space and time, you know, the universe and the first day. It says, God says, let there be light. And Psalm 29 describes the voice of the Lord. And in the gospel reading today, Mark tells of the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River by John the Baptist. In the process, Jesus saw the spirit descending on him like a dove. And as this was happening, he heard a voice that said, You are my son. With you, I am well pleased. So we have the manifestation of God as the appearance of God as light, God as sound, and God as spirit descending like a dove. These and many other ways God manifests and appears to us. One is the, the like a flash of inspiration that an artist has when creating something new or a songwriter writing a new song, a designer designing a new design, an architect making the design for a new building and so forth. Now think about the ways you have experienced the Holy. Yes, the Holy, the Holy Spirit, God is all around us. And we see it and experience God, not just in the really big and intense things, but also the everyday ordinary things as well. Being in nature, a smile from another person, being with family or friends, or in my case, being with my beloved pets, and so forth. 
we feel it with an inner sense of peace and calm. We also hear it in the silence and in the quiet of the still small voice. And all this is a very delicate thing. It takes balance and quiet. And for most of us, it has to be cultivated. I mean, there are some rare people out there that this just happens naturally. But for most of us, it takes lots of practice. However, as we know, our peace can easily be disturbed. Too much noise, too busy, being too distressed. And when this happens, it is very difficult to see, hear, or feel the holy. Now earlier this week, on Wednesday by the way, I was sitting down in my living room with my laptop, just the very beginnings of writing today's sermon. And I was shocked and horrified by what the events would happen in our nation's capital which was coincidentally January 6th, the day of Epiphany. As most of us all know, a, a violent mob attacked the Capitol building while the Senate and the Congress were in session. There was much damage, destruction, people were hurt, some were even killed. Needless to say, I was very distressed by these events. My sense of inner peace and balance were totally thrown out of whack. I found it very difficult to focus and my ability to see or feel or hear God's light and love became totally blurred. So much for writing a sermon on Wednesday. In order to try to gain my sense of peace and calm. I closed my laptop, put it on the coffee table, to, and decided to go for a walk to try to get some exercise and clear my mind. And as I took my walk through my neighborhood, uh, which is really what, something I enjoy doing, especially now that the weather is so nice, I practiced a form of mindfulness called breath prayer. And it's something that I do, that I've done over the years, especially when I get a little bit stressed. And it's a way that I calm myself. Many of you probably practice it or have practiced it. For those of you that have not, it goes like this. You, you concentrate on your breath. You calm your breathing down and you take a nice slow inhalation and in the process of inhaling, you visualize inhaling the love and light of God. You visualize that love and light going into your lungs and being absorbed by your bloodstream and going throughout your body and bringing light and love to your body. And on the exhale, the long slow exhale, you exhale the things that are distressing you, the negativity, the darkness. After I got home, I busied myself by doing some projects around the house. And then I have to say, I took part in one of my newest hobbies, metal sculpture. Yes, I'm a priest who welds. <laughs> And uh, I played some music while I was doing this. And it took my mind off the things that were going on. No radio, no TV, no internet, no texting, no emails, and no social media. Just me and my project. And it worked. My mind started to clear. I started to calm down. And as I was doing this, and in the process, the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came to mind. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence. 
in descending into a spiral of destruction. Hate grows out of fear, pride, ignorance, prejudice, and misunderstanding. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And yes, our world desperately needs more light and love. Now so more than ever. But how to do this? How to bring more light and love to this world? First and foremost, it begins with us, each and every one of us. It is important, vitally important, for us to be aware of our thoughts and feelings. As Jesus said, with eyes to see and ears to hear. As far as, far as, our, as, far as our inner awareness, it needs to be cultivated and developed. For most of us, it takes practice. Much like a musician who must practice for hours, days, weeks, and years just to learn how to play their instrument, it takes lots and lots of practice. If we are doing or seeing or hearing something that causes us to feel darkness, such as fear, anger, rage, or hatred, let us take a moment to pause. Stop. Just stop. Do not react. Do not do anything. Just stop and breathe. As you stop, be aware of what you're feeling. This is the biggest step, becoming aware of what we are feeling, hearing, and seeing. For if we are not aware of our emotions and feelings, and or who or what might be causing or manipulating us into feeling these negative things, they can easily spiral out of control. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, fear can spiral into anger, and then anger spiral into hate, and hate into violence, and darkness overcomes us. But if we have inner awareness, we are better able to hear, see, and feel God's guiding light. If we sense or feel darkness, visualize light, God's light. And as you visualize it, feel it in your breath, in your heart, in your body and all around you. And today, this first Sunday of Epiphany, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus and God made manifest in Jesus the Christ. God's manifestation, God's light and love includes us too. Like the Magi who were guided by the light of a star across a dark desert to the Christ child. We too can be guided by the light. But we must cultivate awareness. We must look, seek, listen, and feel. And practice, practice, practice. In the process, we help bring the manifestation of God's light and love, not only to ourselves, but also to the world that very much needs it. Let us pray. O oh God, by the light of the star manifested to guide the Magi through the darkness to the Christ child, lead us to your holy presence, where we may see, hear, and feel you, and make manifest your light and love, both in our heart and in our world, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Standing as you are able, let us join together in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people, four, three, found on page three eighty seven in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all Amen. may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishop, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, our celebrant today, Reverend Laura, and our deacon, Reverend Carmen, and all deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We acknowledge the traditional peoples of the land on which we stand, especially the ancient people of Ogokum and Pima, and the ancestors of Odom, Apchin, Gila River peoples. We honor and pray for our indigenous neighbors. That we may be well together in respect and harmony. We pray for all who govern especially Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Doug, our governor, and all those who hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our servicemen and women at home and abroad. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our that works, works may find favor in your sight. We pray for those whose lives are impacted by incarceration. We pray for those who are suffering due to forces of natural disasters and violence in our world. We pray for all people affected by migration. That they may be delivered from their distress. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the 
party of eternal rest, that light might perpetually shine upon them. Let us pray. We pray for all saints who have entered into peace, into joy. May we May also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for healing of body, mind, and spirit. For Kay, Debbie, Ron, Mike, David C., Ronnie, Jobeth, Nancy, Gladdy, Suzanne, Reverend Jeannie, Nick and Norma, Susie, Daryl Jr., Vincent and Imani, Cara, Marge, Penny, Debbie, Cheryl. We pray for all the world's response to COVID-19. In your mercy, give eternal peace to all who have died. Comfort families and friends unable to visit. Bring rest, strength, and wisdom to all caregivers. Give us patience as we protect our neighbors through our actions. Father, watch over Paso, Mars, and Jody as they continue their long recovery from COVID. We give great thanks to all people working on development, manufacturing, and distribution of promising vaccines to protect us. We pray for those who are nearing death, Bertrand. We pray for those who have died, for Joanne. And we pray for comfort for her granddaughter. We pray for Joyce and comfort for her friend Nola. For pray for comfort for her sister, Deb. We pray for Sylvia and comfort for her husband, Walter. Loving Creator, we offer our thanksgiving for all the blessings of this life, especially people of St. Peter's. Grant that through our prayers, our lives may radiate the presence of the Christ to all who dwell on earth. For Jesus is our Savior forever and ever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us all in goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us and eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, will forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks and gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O oh Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by the Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us all with your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and hope is of glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of 
God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, God, God Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you all. Amen. Amen.